Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to Time Factor for Negroes, Path 1. Important Notice It is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with this video. If the Negro is not careful, he will drink in all the poison of modern civilization and die from the effects of it. Marcos Garvey Thank you for your support. And to all of you who made donations, we say thank you. And remember, you can always support us at paypal.me forward slash our renaissance or patreon.com forward slash our renaissance. Remember, we subscribe to libraries and archives and your donations help us to do that and we say thank you. Time Factor for Negroes At what point do you think you will become tired of the lie that your forefathers were so stupid and so foolish that they were selling themselves, selling their brothers, selling their mothers, selling their pregnant wives, selling their sisters, selling their husbands and selling everything possible? At what point will you become tired of that lie? So when you hear about the useless apologies rendered by some unknown persons, be it from Ghana or anywhere else, do you wonder why the governments in what was Negroland and Guinea are never the ones rendering the apology? Do you wonder why none of those governments talk about a possible reparation or a possible way of ameliorating the sufferings of the so-called descendants of former slaves in the US and all over the world or even the Negroes back in Africa? Do you wonder why those apologies are coming from the wrong sources? Do you ever sit down to wonder why? So when you are told a lie, do you ever sit back to ask what the liar intends to benefit from the lie? Do you remember and have you ever had the YouTube term advertiser friendly? Now for those who may not know, the advertiser friendly term is something used by YouTube to prevent channels that are saying something they do not like from actually making money f off the channel. So they technically prevent ads from playing on those channels. And our first experience with that term happened about two years ago, soon after we started the channel. So we made some videos which apparently someone within YouTube, not YouTube as a corporate body, but someone inside YouTube didn't like. So that individual first contacted us to say we should remove the videos and we told the person that look, these things are based on research. How would you feel if you were a Negro and somebody is lying against your forefathers and you keep living with that lie? So the next thing he did was he went to label all our videos as not advertiser friendly. And one of them actually came to tease us on the channel to say you are not making money off this. But that is not our interest. That shows you what we said about Wikipedia as well. They have those people in there. They control what people can bring out. Not out of love. Not out of genuine concern for humanity. Not out of humanity to others. But out of a deliberate attempt to sustain subjugation and enslavement of a particular people. So that's why um, they coined that advertiser friendly thing and then we saw it le much later when they came with the so-called 1000 subscriber whatever thing which is not really our interest because we actually appealed some of the videos before then and they upturned it meaning that it was one individual not the corporate YouTube because he turned everything to not advertiser friendly including the ones we had not posted such that if we posted a new video now it will be marked as not advertiser friendly until they uh, applied that they are 1000 subscriber and whatever view thing. But this is not our interest just to give you a background of what they do with it. But it falls into what we want to explain to you about timeline and time factor for Negroes. And have you ever on your own analyzed that term? Do you realize what it's subliminally saying? Let's look at the flow, advertiser friendly. So a business pays YouTube to advertise its products and services 
to as much audience as may be required. Remember, they may choose not to advertise in adult sites or alcohol-related or drugs. That's understandable. Now, YouTube looks at the channel and labels it not advertiser-friendly on its own. Ordinarily, you are going to think that YouTube is trying to protect the advertiser, whereas the YouTube is trying to actually rip off the advertiser, con the advertiser, while at the same time pretending to be protecting the advertiser. So, because what YouTube is trying to suggest or insinuate is that those who come to that channel are not worthy to patronize the advertiser. Remember, if you came to any channel, whether you have 1 million people there or 500 people, what YouTube is telling the everyone is that everyone that comes to that channel is not worthy to patronize the company that is advertising its products. But yet, it collects the money from that company that has paid it to provide the adverts to every customer possible or every potential customer. So think about it. A company that manufactured something like toothbrush wants everyone to use the toothbrush. But YouTube is now telling that advertiser that those that come to a channel that's talking about Negroes and how they can be free are not friendly to it so they shouldn't use toothbrush so you see that the essence works exactly like that of the slave raider because we strongly believe that the individual that was marking our videos are not advertiser friendly initially is actually one of the architects of this whole process our reason for bringing this up is not for youtube it's for us to learn from their lies how their lies are presented as a Greek gift. So you think they are in your favor, whereas they are actually using it to deceive you. But let us move forward and look at the slave trade itself. So in order to sell a slave, the following are the requirements. A slave, a buyer, a seller with the capacity to enslave the victims, money or some form of material inducement, weapons like the yokes, the chains, the guns, the bullets and all that they need and then some means of transportation because the slave seller cannot be buying it from somewhere within the community. Remember the reason they tell you is a trade is it makes it look like you just bring your son to some local market and sell him or a son will bring his dad or a man will bring his pregnant wife which is a lie because when a lie is told often enough it begins to look like the truth so our case here is to bring time into the equation so that you see how the lie collapses but let us move forward so let's look at the research on the brain of the negro compared with that of the european and the orangutan by dr frederick Thiedman, professor of anatomy and physiology in the University of Heidelberg and foreign member of the Royal Society and it was received and read on June 9, 1836. So we just see the synopsis and it tells us that I take the liberty of presenting to the Royal Society a paper on a subject which appears to me to be of great importance in the natural history, anatomy and physiology of man interesting also in a political and legislative point of view. That's our interest here. But then we look at another page also and from the highlighted portion it says many of them deny that the negro is a reasonable being and they say that all negroes are vicious malignant perverse treacherous and faithless they observe that the understanding of the negro is not capable of improvement that their temper and disposition are incorrigible and that they are incapable of civilization some have even believed the falsely supposed natural inferiority of the intellectual and moral faculties of the Ethiopian race to be an excuse for slavery. Now, our interest here is the Ethiopian race, which was the name the Negroes were known as prior to the slave trade. So now you see how they have over time changed them to become Negroes and subsequently they are now being called African, the only people addressed with the continent. Remember, the Europeans, they, are, they have their Scottish they have their English, they have their Portuguese, they have their Germans, all having their own identities. But 
the Negro is the only one that has now been dressed on the borrowed robes of being African when there are Arabs in Africa. There are Turks, there are Fulanese, there are Babas, there are even Caucasians in Africa. But now the Negro is carrying the cross of the so-called African and that is a country that is so dark. And the non-Negroes are busy killing the Negroes and they bear the name African apparently to relate it to the backwardness of the the entire continent as it were so the reason we brought you here you see that they were addressed as ethiopians at that time now they created another ethiopia and now started calling that one ethiopia and subsequently the revisionism is being applied everywhere so we need to understudy who is behind all this we need to also understand those they use in sub-saharan africa at least to know what is going on let us also reference letters on slavery addressed to the Cumberland Congregation, Virginia by J.D. Paxton, their former pastor, and it was published in 1833. And we see the following. It is generally known that Negro slavery was introduced into this country about 200 years ago, soon after the first settlements were made. Now, this book was published in 1833. So, this should tell you because the British joined the slave trade about 170 years after it had started. So, this should tell you how long the slave trade had lasted as at 1833 and should also help you come to the realization that the 400 years being um, propounded by the so-called hebrew israelites is a big lie it's buys into the slave master's narrative so you see why we came here anyway but that's not our interest our interest is further down on the same page from the highlighted portion it is distinctly stated in the histories of those times that both queen elizabeth and louis the 13th in whose days it began had scruples about the lawfulness of it and did not give their consent until they were assured that the negroes were brought over with their own free consent and that it was the most ready way to convert them to christianity so now you see why the perpetrators of the evil are exonerating themselves we are buying into their narrative that it was a trade whereas the people that did it are still alive and well so each time they will go and pay one unknown person in Ghana and which are the Negroid groups to come and say they were behind the slave trade and render an apology which unfortunately the descendants of former slaves in the US mostly and other parts of the world buy into. We all know these are not true. We all know there is no way those people can be behind the slave trade because they do not have the capacity to do so. Now. Tell us, if you notice, they are saying it was the Negroes coming themselves. If they were coming themselves, where would they kill themselves when they were captured? If they were not yoked? That should be your big question to answer. And from the same book, I'm reading from within the highlighted portion. Although the conversion of the Negroes to Christianity was the imposing excuse for bringing them over, yet the impression that as soon as they professed religion, and were baptized they would be free soon began to operate and there is incontrovertible proof that it operated and that extensively so as to prevent their being instructed and received into the church there is on record legislative enactments prohibiting the baptism of slaves without the consent of their owners and on the alleged ground that it might interfere with the rights of property so much did this opinion and feeling operate against the religious instruction of slaves that the bishop of london to whose di diocese the english colonies belonged addressed a circular to the colonists and attempted to reconcile them to the instruction and baptism of their slaves by laying it down as a principle that religion had nothing to do with civil rights and that whatever rights they had in their slaves before baptism they would continue to have afterwards this opinion gradually supplanted the other a remnant however of the first opinion still remained and uniting with a general impression that much information except how to work was dangerous in slaves has led almost universally to discourage and often directly to prevent giving instructions to that people and somehow you believe that the message they brought to you was for the salvation of your soul and you believe that 
at that time the negroes were not worthy of going to heaven if it was through baptism but today you believe that the same thing the same deity they brought you will be taking you to heaven well it is time you go back and read whatever book they brought you again and see if it is even saying the same thing as what they are doing so let us again reference letters of cassius m clay slavery the evil the remedy Remember, this is not Cassius Clay of Muhammad Ali and all that. This is Cassius M. Clay and this was published in 1830s. So we see the following, which is our interest. So reading from the highlighted portion, it says, Slavery and education are natural enemies. So which is our interest here? You can pause the video and read the entire page yourself. It was just talking about the evil of the slave trade. Now, our question to you is, if in the education they now provide you, they tell you that your forebears, your forefathers sold themselves, is it not time you begin to ask how? At least look at the possibility, the logistics. Do you just wake up and point on somebody and say, I've sold you, and the person begins to work with them? Or how? Remember, you can start by looking at when was money discovered? When was whatever they were bringing to buy the slaves with discovered? That will tell you because it is important that we look at what could have transpired as that will help us understand what is happening today because the same slave raiders are still there. Now let us reference a narrative of Henry Watson, a fugitive slave written by himself and it was published in 1848. We see the following. From within the highlighted portion, like the most of my brothers in bondage, I have no correct account of my age. Slaves keep the birth of their children by the different seasons of the year. Children often ask their parents their age. The answer is this planting con time. You are six, eight or ten. Just as it may happen to be, but even this knowledge was I deprived of by my master, who was one of the of those proud Virginians whose principal business was to raise slaves for the market, though I was permitted to remain with my mother on his plantation until I was about eight years of age. My mother was the cook at what slaves called the great house. So our interest here is how the slaves were not even allowed to know their ages. Remember, the reason they did it was at that time, they claimed that the Negroes were not human so and they didn't live so long. So the only way to sustain that lie was to make sure that they don't know their age. So at any time, they could kill a Negro and say, oh no, he was just aged about this. And remember, the moment the Negro starts getting old, when he can no longer labor because they were using the slaves as beasts of burden, then they will easily kill him. So that's why you notice that they're saying they are not allowed to know their age. So even if you were counting, you wouldn't know their calendar system. This was their calendar system because the Negroes had their own calendar system where they came from. But unfortunately, because they were different, the Negroes are not just one, they don't have one language. They are just the same people, but different languages, which from the records, if you were to reference the materials, you will see what we're talking about. So that's what we brought you here to see. So you see why your education you have to look at it and scrutinize it very well. Education is not just telling you what they want you to know. It has to be what you need to know. So that's why you see that they keep telling you it is a trade, slave trade. Africans sold other Africans. They will pay people like Professor Gates to come and be telling you that. Remember, Professor Gates has no right, no better knowledge of how it happened more than you do. Especially if you are about the same age with him or even older or younger. All he did was to read books, repeat what they, he was taught in school, and then come out to tell you what they told him. So he has no right beyond what he has learned and researched. So it is your duty, is incumbent on you to also look for the materials written at that time by eyewitnesses and study them yourself. The academic curriculum does not allow you to think outside the box. It won't let you know what could have transpired. And that is the reason they do it that way. So if Professor Gates comes out to say Africans sold other Africans, you will notice that most Africans will believe it. Most Negroes will believe it. But that's the reason they pay him to do that. 
but he he cannot even stand a five minute or ten minute debate with anyone who knows how it happened because he is just paid to propagate the lie a lie cannot stand in the face of truth so he can't even provide you with one reference that predates 1950 that suggests that africans sold other africans and he knows that anyway so you can pause this video and read the entire page yourself but our interest is how this slave was separated cruelly from his mother and it shows us where it says this cruel separation brought on a feat of sickness from which they did not expect i would recover now remember we were told that the negroes were giving up their children selling everybody themselves so you see what we're talking about so the old slave woman who took care of me during my sickness by way of consolation gave me as much information as she could about my mother's being taken away she told me that a slave dealer drove to the door in a buggy and my mother was sent for to come into the house when getting inside she was knocked down tied and thrown into the buggy and carried away as the old woman related these things to me I felt as if all hope was gone, that I was forsaken and alone in this world. So you see how they were taking away just a woman from her child in the so-called new world, in the so-called developed world today. Now you are imagining and you are thinking that the cell in back in Negro land or Guinea was where the man will call the, the whoever the husband was will call his pregnant wife and say, "Oh, I've now sold you." Remember, we talked to you about what was required to sell somebody. You must have the capacity. You must have the weapons. You must have at least the buyer. So all these things you have to put in place. So you're telling us that pregnant wives were sold. All those people, if they claim like Professor Gates claims they make wars, he has to explain to us how many communities needed to be destroyed to fill a slave ship of capacity 400 that's all we need him because he needs to tell us how big the villages are and if they had bows and arrows how they could have captured that number remember that question is a question they can never answer so the reason we are taking time to bring you to this is to show you that there was no such trade because the army with which they did it is still there and is still doing the same thing till today and we will show you why you are not hearing what the army is doing in sub-saharan africa but the people that did it, which is the army, they are still there, which we are going to show you before we round up. So remember, we have been unable to determine exactly where the slaves came from. And remember, they couldn't have come from the entire Africa, which from the records you must have seen and known yourself. But our challenge is to identify those who they were selling and those who they were not, because it is not everyone that was being captured. So let us reference native races and their rulers, sketches and studies of official life and administrative problems in Nigeria by CL Temple and it was published in 1918 and we see the following. Traveling further south, leaving the area conquered before our arrival by the Fulani and by the Kanuri from Bono, we emerge from the plains and enter broken country, sometimes as in the case of the area to the north of the Benue River, we find large granite ranges with peaks 6,000 feet in height above the level of the sea. Here the natives are very different. Semitic blood is no longer evident and the type approaches rather towards that of the Negro, but as yet they are not by any means pure Negroes, but rather Negroid. So our interest here is they are not pure Negroes, but Negroids. So the essence is for you to understand that it is not every dark-skinned person that is Negro. So when you see all those so-called uh, African Americans telling you how they are just African Americans or related to every black person in Africa, you know that it's out of ignorance. Remember, slavery and education are enemies. So there is no way they could have educated them properly. Because if they knew where they came from, it would be very easy for them to know when or how the slaves were captured. So, but let us continue to show you that what you see as Nigeria today existed prior to the United States. Remember, they came up with a lie. If you asked any Nigerian professor, no matter how old, 
he or she is gonna tell you that Nigeria was coined by Flora Shaw in 1914. Sometimes they will tell you that oh he, she suggested this the name in 1890s or wherever they chose. The reason is because the lie was exposed some years back. So they started looking for a different iteration of it. So, but we're going to continue to show you what we mean because until we identify who was Negro and who was not, it will be extremely difficult to expose the slave trade as it's still going on, but subliminally today. So from the opposite page, we see where it says traveling south, but on the west bank of the Niger, we come to the zone inhabited by the great Yoruba speaking tribes. Whether they are one tribe or a number of tribes speaking different dialects of the same language is a point not yet decided. They are certainly not pure Negro and we are not the aboriginal inhabitants. So our reason for bringing you here is so that you understand the gang ups. So when you see the gang ups today, you can extrapolate to see how it was back then. Remember, the king of Benin who prohibited slaves from passing through his kingdom was banished so you need to understand this if the slaves were coming from bini kingdom there is no way he would have prohibited them from passing through there he didn't say stop them from raiding he said passing through the, his kingdom and the british and their foot soldiers back in sub-saharan africa in what was negro land banished him so we want you to take time and study these materials yourself so that you can see the army they have there for what they are that's the same slave raiding terror group right there in your very eyes hidden in plain sight and you can still see it so if we reference a universal history of the religious rites ceremonies and customs of the whole world by william hurd and it was published in 1799 we see the following note the date 1799 we see the following the religion of the inhabitants of Nigeria or Nigeria. So our interest is the name Nigeria there in a book of 1799. Yet the child is taught in school that the name was coined by Flora Shaw in 1914. And when the lie was exposed, they changed it to how she suggested it in 1899. So your question should become, why are they lying? If they had nothing to hide, why are they lying? That should be your question with the date so let us reference the story of africa and its explorers by robert brown ma phd volume one and there we see the following so from within the highlighted portion it says the reason was that the fullers were a warlike people capable of placing sixteen thousand men in the field and prone to hostilities against their neighbors since they could not obtain European goods without slaves, nor slaves without making war. However, only the young and strong were taken, the old and feeble, to avoid trouble, had their throats cut. But they excused themselves for this barbarity by declaring that the people who they thus raided, robbed and murdered, never prayed to God and that as the European factories would sell guns, powder, and cloth for no other articles except black men and women, the people whom the travelers tried to persuade into more peaceful pursuits had no alternative. So you see that they didn't have an alternative. You also see that they had 16,000 troops with which they captured the slaves. So now, why will somebody tell you that the slaves were coming of their own volition? Why will somebody tell you that they were doing it voluntarily? Why will somebody tell you that it was father selling mother, mother selling brother, brother selling sister, and all those things are the, and the rubbish like what Professor Gates tells you that Africans sold other Africans. So you see that those 16,000 men are what they converted to Nigerian army today and the army is in sub-Saharan Africa. Remember, what you see as Nigeria today is Nigeria after the slave trade, not Nigeria as you would imagine. It was bigger than that and it used to be known and called Sudan or Nigeria or Negroland. So, and the other part was called Guinea. So you need to begin to ask, why are they lying? 
remember it is the lie that is exposing what they are doing if they were not lying you can live with it and say oh okay maybe that's what happened then the people didn't know but the truth is the army is still doing what it was known for till tomorrow morning they are still killing people innocent people and let us show you how that is going on recently a fulani came to our channel to suggest that to protect ourselves from the murderous um fulanis that we need to hire security to protect us individually so you can see his comment here where we try to show him that that is a very senseless uh, suggestion to make remember we had told him that look we are not one in africa that idea that we are one or united is what is used to deceive the negroes while the murderous group abuses slaughtering them in their numbers so he replied to say sorry for what you said i also suggested that you look for security to protect you all from the murderous fulani and stop sounding weak is that not a solution you all are not willing to unite and fight there is nothing wrong with being weak but strength is in unity and it looks like you all don't even want that so you remember we told you that they are a group that do not want to even condemn the use of european weapons but they condemn European books. If you produce a book that is said to be European, they start their Boko Haram. But when you bring them weapons, which is what they love, they are happy with it. So you see his suggestion for a people he claims are united is for them to go and hire security to protect them from the massacres from a people that are militarily trained. This is the same 16,000 troops we showed you was where the Nigerian army came from. So the reason we showed you the Negroid group is for you to understand how they gang up together against the Negroes. So you see his suggestion here. So we're going to take you one step further to show you the type of terror he thinks an individual soldier or somebody that is not the military can protect you from. So here you can see what the number of people killed are like. But this individual, because he's obviously a fool and he, that's how they reason. So he thinks the way out will be to go and hire security to come and protect you from these people that can kill 200 people now the security that you hire will be one person that one person what kind of gun will he have to match this number to be killing people remember the slave masters are solidly behind them so you are not going to hear all this on cnn or bbc so because they are working for the slave masters the same thing they were doing that's the same way the slave raid was done so you don't think we're telling you anything different from what you should already know if you were to study the materials yourself. So now, the person that is expecting one security to come and protect us also will be the same one to defend the army. He is going to tell you that this army was not the one that was capturing and selling the slaves until renamed the Nigerian army in 1863. So let us show you their game so that you understand because what they do is that they make sure they disarm the so-called negroes the victims of their terror and then in night in the day they are army then at night they come in and terrorize and wipe out the entire place because they use the uh, apparatus of the state as if they are a legitimate army whereas they are just a terror group so you see that the police and the state ensures that the citizenry do not have even the smallest of weapons to defend themselves now the army will now come at night and masquerade as hatsmen and slaughter an entire community which was exactly how they did the slave trade exactly so if you looked at the picture on your screen the question should be if you are in any of those houses the fire will burn you if you come out the army will kill you if you notice the fires are burning do they look like people that are fighting the fires the answer is no so but this fulani is suggesting to us to go and hire security in a place that people are not allowed that civilians are not allowed to be our weapons to protect us from this type of um, terror so you see the game that's their game the reason they are getting away with it is because the slave master is working with them the, the europeans the arabs the same group that did the slave trade that's still what they are doing the only reason they are getting away with it is because the negroes refuse to read come together and at least be able to say what is going on you notice that even the so-called descendants of um, former slaves in the u.s they keep thinking that africa is their 
or home everybody in africa is their brother but they will never ask okay what are these wars for what are you fighting over why are you killing yourselves who why are you taking weapons from the slave masters to kill yourself at least if they asked that basic question they will begin to know that the weapons are in the hands of the same people that captured and sold their forefathers and here we come to the end of this edition of time factor for negroes we hope we have been able to provide you with some thought-provoking issues you could research on we also hope you will find time to conduct your own research. Thank you very much for listening. Peace.